The open source AI model is getting better and better. Today we're going to check out the Hydream E1.1, the latest updated version of the Hydream image editing model. Now, as you can see on the leaderboard in VR source, it's showing that Hydream 1.1 is better than some other paid subscription AI models. They've claimed to be better than the Flux Context dev, and the only that are better than Hydream are the paid models of Flux Context Max and Pro, as well as the OpenAI GPT 4.0 image editing model. We're going to check out how it performs. I've tried out some of the image editing like this, and we've got pretty cool different styles of image editing that I've been able to do with these AI models. Now here's the comfy UI workflow that we can test and work with for image editing using Hydream. I'm going to go through this workflow really quick and then see what kind of features we can use with this AI model first. After that, we'll look at the installations and such. So first of all, what we're going to need is the load model section. Here we have the Hydream E 1.1B F16 safe tensor files. You can download this from the Hugging Face repo, or you've got the link in the description right here where this workflow is coming from, the browse template. When you click on the browse template, you'll see that there's a high dream image editing workflow underneath. If you go to the all template section, scroll down, search for high dream, and you'll see this high dream E 1.1 image edit workflow. Once you click on that, this workflow will appear, but I've added something to the image loading part as well as some settings here. For the most part though, the workflow using custom nodes or native nodes is the same as the template. But again, you have to update your comfy UI to the latest version to be able to run this AI model. Right here, I just tested the result using this kind of 3D image and transferred it to an anime style. It can definitely be used for that. And then, like this example, I've changed the outfit of the character to another, this yellow color jacket. We were able to do it pretty nicely. So far, I've seen the results, and in the second example here, I'm using this AI image, and I changed the outfit of the model walking on the catwalk to a blue dress. This was a very simple, basic prompt that I did. So basically, so far, I've seen that this AI model sometimes isn't able to keep the whole image exactly the same for all the elements or objects. It's only editing a specific part of the character or one of the objects in the image. For example, we have audiences sitting on both sides of the runway path here, but after generation, it only kept one part of the audience sitting on the side. The catwalk runway here changes in the background. The character's face remains the same this time, and the hairstyle is very close to the source image. It does follow the prompt of what I needed, to change the color of the dress instead of sportswear. But one thing, as you can see, the border here still has some noise. That's just the way it is with this image model. It still can't quite cut those edges or the border parts of the image cleanly. I even tried with different sizes, resizing the image smaller for generation, but it still couldn't get rid of that upsampling noise on the borders. It happens. That's just how it is at this point. And in this workflow, so far, I don't see any way to use an empty latent to set our own image size. So this is another second test where I noticed that issue might happen a lot with Hydream E 1.1. Now, the generation time on my computer, since I'm using an NVIDIA RTX Pro 6000, I'm getting about 30 to 40 seconds per image generation. But don't take my generation times as a benchmark. Back when I used the older versions of Hydream on an NVIDIA 4090, it took about a minute or two minutes to generate an image. So you gotta measure that based on what kind of GPUs and VRAM you have. Also, you have to consider the GPU chips. Are they powerful enough to process this AI model? For this AI model, it's currently using about 36 to 38 gigabytes of VRAM in this process when I load the Hydream BF16 model here. So yeah, this is kind of a large AI model to run. There's also another GGUF quantized model available, and I'll link that up and show you guys sooner rather than later in this video. And as you can see in the clip loader here, we've got a lot of files loading. This is one of the differences between Flux Context and this model. With Flux Context, we can easily just use the clip L and T5XXL, FP16 or FP8, which is good enough to run that image model. But for Hydream, we need four clip loader files, as you can see right here, to load the image models with the text encoding. Next, 
I'm going to try another one using a different image and see how it looks and performs. In the second example here, I'm changing the background, basically using a very simple approach, not trying to push too hard for this AI model. Changing the background from this city view to a beach scene like this. Although it's not really detailed and clear, it's able to put the colorations of, you know, a side view of the sea and some sand on the ground. We can keep the character the same, but there's some noise, as you can see between the hair and the sky in the background, some white noise here. That's something I've noticed happening in this AI image model. This AI model works better with a 1024 pixel image. So I made a little change here, resizing before passing any image to the processing for the sampling groups. This way, we'll have the 1024 pixel square size, allowing the image model to have a little more accuracy without rendering noisy borders on the side of the image. Let's try out another one and see how it's going to look. Okay. The next example here is doing a Marco image edit, where I just add a little part of something on top of this image. This is the full image where we have a pretty modern cyber style background of the street. Then I resize the image, and after that, I put futuristic sunglasses on the woman's face. That was a really simple text prompt that I did here. That's all I needed to put the sunglasses on top of this image. Surprisingly, this image was able to remain almost all the elements and objects from the source image. The texture of the clothing, the hairstyle, the hair color, all of it stayed intact. Even the jewelry around the neck replicated what we had in the source image. Then I tried to turn this red sports car in the image into a cute little mini size pickup truck. Again, I just used a simple text prompt, just saying, put a pickup truck on the road. That was the basic prompt I did, and it was able to do that. The shadow and the side mirror reflect on the car's shadow in this area. The background of the highway, everything remained the same. The trees, the fence, all stayed consistent. Next up, we're working on a character here who's drinking coffee in a coffee shop. Kind of boring, right? So I changed that to something else. She is drinking a glass of red wine in a dining room. But something's missing here. As you can see, the sleeve hasn't changed yet, and it's still keeping part of the sweater sleeve on the side. Well, it's not able to create a perfect image in one sampler. That's just how it is with image generation models. If you need a perfect image, you might need a second sampling to refine it. That's standard, even starting with Flux 1, we needed a refiner sampler to do that as well. So I assume people will comment saying, oh, this isn't a good image model, blah, blah, blah. But look at this. It's just the default template in Comfy UI here. So I don't have any complaints so far because it is what it is as a base model with one sampler node for generating images. And this image model is also able to add objects to an image. For example, I have this spaceship flying above the sky here with sunlight coming from the middle of the image. I changed the position here within this region to add another spaceship that's burning in flames heading toward landing on Earth. So it was able to do that. The style on this one is pretty nice actually. When you see the reflections from the other spaceship on the side, it's changing the colors for the lighting. When you compare that with the source image, we have the sunlight reflections in this area, the surface of the spaceship on the side, and then in the generated image, we see more orange-yellowish color reflections of the lighting. So, it's not only changing an object, but also the lighting effects and other colorations of the overall image. Adding objects and other features in this image model is definitely possible. So far, I'm pretty satisfied with this open source model. This open source model is kind of heavy in terms of generating performance. When loading it, it's going to require about 36 to 38 gigabytes of VRAM. That's similar to what they have with their image model size. As you can see in the Comfy UI repo on Hugging Face, they have the Hydream repo, where they have the safe tensor files for all versions of the Hydream model. The E1.1, which is on the top right now in the first row, is the BF16 model. As you can see, this is a 34 gigabyte file, so it's kind of similar to what they have in the AI model when it's loaded onto the GPU. It's going to need about 36 gigabytes right now at idle time. It's quite similar to the file storage because it also includes the text encoder and other components, adding a bit more M requirement when running this AI model. I've linked up this safe tensor files link in the description below. You guys can check it out. 
This is going to be the BF16 model. There's another one using the GGUF quantization model of this AI, which is in this repo. I just found out that it has different quantized sizes for Hydream E 1.1, starting from Q2 quantization from 2-bit to Q8, which is the 8-bit quantized model available. Even the Q8 uses 18 gigabytes of file storage. So I assume that with 20 gigabytes of VRAM, you'd be able to run the Q8 GGUF model. On average, consumer PCs with 12 to 16 gigabytes of VRAM might be able to run Q4 or Q5. So where do you save those files in Comfy UI? Right here, as I have the file explorer of the Comfy UI folder, we're going to locate the models folder, then go into the diffusion model subfolder, where we're going to save that Hydream E 1.1 BF16 safe tensor file. Again, this file comes from the Comfy UI repo that I mentioned earlier. Going back to the GGUF quantized model, it's going to be saved into the models subfolder where you'll find the UNet folder. You're going to save that in the UNet folder here. I've already saved a bunch of GGUF quantized models here for testing and demo purposes. But if you're running low on VRAM, I'd suggest you try out the GGUF quantized model from this The Hugging Face repo here. For the text encoder, we're going to save that in the model subfolder where you'll find the text encoder folder. Click into it and you can save all the clips, clip G, clip L, Hydream, as well as the LAMA 3.18 billion parameter model and the T5XXL FP8 or FP16 models. I've got both T5 text encoders here just for testing purposes. You don't have to download all of them. You might just use one that's suitable for your computer to run. Back to the Hugging Face page. Getting this installed and running is pretty easy. All the files by default are linked in this markdown note in the workflow. If you still don't know how to load that workflow, once again, you can click the browse template, scroll down to the bottom, and until you see this Hydream E 1.1 image edit workflow. Once you click that, this whole workflow will be available for you to play around with. But it requires the latest version of Comfy UI, which supports Hydream E 1.1.1. So that's it for this video. It's pretty cool seeing these AI models make breakthroughs. Open source AI models are now able to rank at the top of the charts, where you see other paid or subscription models falling behind right now. This is the power of open source, just like back in the day when Red Hat started, where they built a powerful enterprise system based on Linux for servers. This is Hydream E 1.1, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.